So we've got two companies, Flexi Limited and Broom Limited, and the information relates to these two companies. Background information, both companies operate in the fashion clothing industry, so same industry, we're comparing apples with apples, and the financial year ends on the last day of Feb each year. Bob Gates, he owns shares in both companies, and on the 1st of November 2020, he convinced the board of directors of Flexi Limited to repurchase 150,000 of his shares. Did he use his influence to convince them? We'll find out. He used the money received to purchase additional shares in Broom Limited. So maybe a bit of a tactical decision from him here. So the required profitability. Quote and explain two financial indicators to show which company is managing its expenses more efficiently and is therefore more profitable. So profitability indicators, something like operating expenses on sales or operating profit on sales or net profit on sales. These are the three massive profitability ratios. So operating expenses on sales, it decreased from 17% to 13,6% for Broom Limited. Net profit on sales, it increased from 16% to 19,6%, oh, and sorry, number two. Operating profit, it went from 20% to 24,2%. And it becomes clear that Broom Limited is managing their expenses more efficiently. But Flexi, on the other hand, is decreasing. They went down with net profit, they went down with operating profit, but their expenses, it increased. So remember with ratios, name the company, name the indicator, increase or decrease, that's it. Question two, dividends, earnings and returns. Comment on the dividend payout policy of Flexi Limited and explain why this is an irresponsible change in policy. So we went from 59% to 115%. In 2021, they paid 92 cents compared to EPS of 80 cents. So 92 cents compared to the DPS of 80 cents. And although the EPS dropped from 138 to 80 cents, the DPS was 10 cents more than last year. And now it exceeds EPS. So it was 82 over 138 and now it's 92 over 80. From 59% to 115%, that's massive. The company is depleting their retained income reserves, which can be effectively used to rebuild their profitability. And they're simply trying to keep their shareholders happy, trying to influence the market price of shares by increasing their dividends. And they're maybe equalizing dividends over a several year period. Comment on the percentage return on shareholders' equity of each company. So that's Roche. Return on shareholders' equity, so 12.2% to 7.6% for Flexi, and from 10% to 14.1% for Broom. So Broom is definitely in the pound seats here. And Broom seems to be doing much better, as the return on shareholders' equity has actually increased by 4%. But for Flexi, it's decreased from 7% to 12% and just be very careful to do the correct calculations. Now, a shareholder feels that their earnings per share in Broom Limited are better than that in Flexi Limited. Explain why you agree with him and quote figures or calculations. So to get full marks, you must compare the earnings per share to the value of a share. So MP, NAV for Flexi Limited, and you must do the same for Broom Limited as well. So this is what you should have done. So EPS over NAV for both companies, EPS to the share price. The share price is known as the market price. And you could do this for year on year, so 2020 and 2021. So the earnings per share over NAV for Flexi, if you do a quick calculation there, so 80 cents divided by 1,081 cents, that gives you 7,4% versus in Broom Limited, 72 over 632, and that would give you 11,4%. If we do the same to earnings per share over the market price, you guys can get the idea of it now, we'll get to 8,1% for Flexi and 10,9% for Broom. And it becomes clear here that Flexi Limited earned 80 cents on a share valued at 990 cents 
over 1,081 cents, as we previously calculated, while Broom Limited earned 72 cents on a share, valued at the 660 over the 632. There were a few other comparisons here. So for example, you could have stated that Flexi Limited's earnings per share decreased from 138 cents to 80 cents, while Broom's increased from 65 cents to 72 cents. Anything along these lines would have scored you all the marks. Next, the shareholding of Bob Yates in both companies. Comment on the price paid for the shares repurchased by Flexi Limited. Provide two points in quote figures. So here we're comparing figures of the 13 Rand 20 cents to the market price of 990 or 1130. We're also comparing the 13 Rand 20 cents to a NAV of that 1081 and that 1128. So in other words here, he made them pay a lot more for his shares, 1,320 cents, when the net asset value per share as well as the market price for a share is a lot lower. So again, you're comparing that repurchase price to these four figures, and it's greater than all four of those figures. So he abused his status to enrich himself. And the market price also shows a decreasing trend. There's no demand for the shares and could drop the price even further. So to calculate the number of shares that Bob purchased in Broom Limited with the money he received from the share buyback at Flexi Limited, well, it's that 1,980,000 divided by this 6 Rand 60 cents. So 1,980,000 over the 660 and he bought 300,000 shares. That's it. Explain the effect of the share repurchase on the percentage shareholding of Bob Yates in each company, port figures and trends. So in Flexi, Bob was the majority shareholder. He was at 51%. But now he only has 40,5% of the shares. So if you do a quick calculation, it's going to be that 283,500 over the 700,000. 283,500 over the 700,000. And that's where the 40,5% is coming from. So he wasn't, now he isn't. But for Broom, he had 41,8% of the shares initially. But now he's majority shareholder. He now has 50,7%. So he's the majority. He has control over the company. To have control, you need 50% of the shares plus one. Our calculation to get to this figure was 760,000 over 1,500,000. And that's how we calculated that 50,7%. And lastly, financial strategies and gearing. Explain the decisions taken by the directors of Broom Limited and how these will benefit the company. So they increased their share capital by 2,640,000. As you guys can see, from zero to 2,640,000. Or in other words, by 400,000 shares, they decreased their loan by 400,000 as well. A major benefit of this is all the money generated is spent on lasting items such as fixed assets, which could generate further profits in the future. And now there's an improved debt equity ratio, reduced debt and simply lower risk in the company. And last question, explain how the decisions taken by Flexi Limited on its total capital employed has affected the risk and gearing of the business. Quote two financial indicators with figures and trends. So the big two financial indicators for capital employed, it's always going to be debt equity ratio and of course, ROTCE, ROTC, return on total capital employed. Debt equity of Flexi, it's now increased from 0 0.4 to 1.1 and return on total capital employed has decreased from 16,1% to the 10,2%. And now there's high risk due to the increase in loan and the business is now experiencing negative gearing. Why is the business negatively geared? Because return on total capital employed is lower than the interest rate of 13%. Therefore, the business is now negatively geared. I hope that makes sense. 
good luck for the section. It's very exciting. Just know, you know, who's who in the zoo. What do we compare to what? So if I give you profitability indicators, know what to put down, dividends, earnings, returns, anything along those lines. If I speak to you about debt, know it's debt equity and return on total capital employed, little things like that, and you'll be able to nail the section. So list the company. Are we talking about Flexi here or Broom? Are we talking about profitability? Okay, list the profitably, <laughs> profitably, the profitability indicators. Did it increase, did it decrease? Boom, boom, and then give a general comment. Remember to answer the question. It's not that difficult. It's like a monkey see, monkey do question. Whatever they tell you, go back to your theory. So it's something like this, affecting the risk and gearing of the business. Okay, risk and gearing, debt equity, return on total capital employed. Now, did it increase or did it eat? Oh, sorry, I'm speaking so fast here. I'm getting so passionate. Did it increase or did it decrease? And depending on that, you give your final comment. That's it. You don't need to overcomplicate the section. It's not that difficult. You can do it, guys. You really, really can. Believe in yourself.